new exhibition at the Museum for Islamic Art in Jerusalem aims to highlight Palestinian culture before 1948. Ayman Siksik went to see it up close and brought us the story. At the Museum for Islamic Art in Jerusalem, a new exhibition is taking Israeli audiences on a trip down memory lane of a different kind than expected. This month, at least 5,000 Israelis, they visited the, the, this exhibition. I was touched. Tiraz, local embroidery, is a one-of-a-kind exhibition of Palestinian costumes from the time before Israel was established. Through the garments, which have been meticulously preserved, the texture of Palestinian life before 1948 begins to emerge. The stars of the exhibition are clear. Palestinian women. Some of the items in the exhibition are on display here for the first time. Like this embroidered wedding dress, originating in Ramallah. Like every item on display here, it too was handmade. Everything that you see here essentially is uh, our dresses meant for uh, holidays and specifically weddings. And it, is, it's, it was crafted and used by both Muslim and Christian women from all around the area. For me personally, uh, and I can say that as, as a Jew working at the Museum for Islamic Art, uh, it's very interesting seeing, um, let's say, works of art that are not from the main centers of Islamic art. Indeed, that's not the only surprise the Tiraz exhibition entails about Palestinian women. Everybody maybe think, thinks that the Palestinian women, they are uh, primitive, they are not active, and they are exploring through the exhibition that the women in the Palestinian part, they were active. They were productive, they were artists. Traditionally, uh, the embroidery was transferred from mother to daughter. They, these dresses were usually made by girls, young girls, during the five, six years before their wedding. You, you shouldn't remember that girls would be wed off at the age of 15, 16. So these were made by 12-year-old girls. The items in the exhibition are owned by a private collector, Manuel Kleidman, and some of them have been on display in Israel before. But in a country where culture is increasingly politicized, where does an exhibition about Palestinian heritage fit in? I was nervous before how this exhibition be, can be accepted by the Israelis or the Jewish part. So me, myself, I'm Palestinian and Arab from Galilee. All the parties that deal with art in Israel, so we are concerned that sometime, maybe because of politics, they will stop us to produce art and to present it for the public. But for every dangerous mission, a little help from above is always welcome. This was usually uh, used as, uh, let's say, sort of a scarecrow carried at the head of the wedding ceremony, whose um, purpose would be to scare off the demons and every potential danger for the brides. Forever festive, these wedding garments live on in Palestinian memory, a reminder of a time when celebrations and women were more integral parts of Palestinian society. And with me right now here in the studio is Ayman Siksa. Good evening. Good evening, Lucy. You know, there is a big, um, let's say, discussion about whether there is an Israeli fashion, if there is something like that, like an Israeli fashion industry, if there is Palestinian in fashion industry? Well, I think what this exhibition shows us is that there clearly was. Up until the 1950s, uh, these items were handmade. Of course, they were handmade for occasions, but their purpose was just the same as fashion today, to look nice, to be impressive, and they were affected by European countries. Some of the coins we saw uh, in the story were actually imported from Europe. And uh, to wear coins from Europe on your neck and on your head was considered that you have married well, that you are well off in your life with a good husband. And so we see the same purposes as fashion, even though not the commercial side. This was to be kept in the family. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at this. this. These items are amazing. It's like today, you know, I think all the big fashion companies uh, are going back. And if we're looking at what it, the fashion in fashion magazines right now, you are seeing a lot of these things. One of the biggest uh, companies in Israel, fashion companies, if we can say that there was Israeli fashion, was Mesquite that actually took a lot from uh, the Palestinian fashion and 
actually directed it to the Israeli one. That's right. I think you're touching on one of the hardest points about this exhibition as well. There is the question of if these items belong to Palestinian women who no longer own them, who owns these? Can they be displayed at a museum? Who exactly should have them and keep them at home? But I think above all, what I've learned from Nadim and Jenya speaking to them today is that these are objects of beauty. And as objects of beauty, they should be made accessible to the public. Even though they have a, a vast history to introduce us to, not only us uh, Israelis too, but I think what I, was, what I heard today about the Palestinian community in Jerusalem was very interesting. When they arrive at the uh, Museum for Islamic Art in Jerusalem, they told Nadim that even though this is for them the Israeli part of Jerusalem that they do not frequent, when they enter and they see these, they feel at home. Wow. I think that really goes a long way to speak about the power of art. It's the power of art and it's amazing. It's such a young country and this discussion is always is a, can you actually have a fashion industry or an Israeli fashion or a Palestinian fashion when you're that young? But when we're talking about Palestinians, we're talking about a little bit before 48. Just the same as with Israeli food. <laughs> exactly, just the same with Israeli food. <laughs> Who has hummus? Who is hummus? It's just like the fight over hummus and falafel and shawarma. I'm in Siksik, you made me hungry. And <laughs> I'm eager for a dress like that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucy.